Hey guys, today is a very impromptu video, there's absolutely no script or anything, nothing pre-written apart from 10 notes that I have written down. I get asked very frequently what to expect when getting a baby leopard gecko and that I should do a video on this. And since I don't have any baby leopard geckos anymore, obviously because they've all grown up, it's difficult to visually do stuff for this. So what I've done is just made 10 points that are on the top of my head things to expect when getting a baby leopard gecko. So let's kick things off with number one. They're very flighty. As babies, when they're not tame, they can move very quick and they're very small. So be aware of that. That just means you need to tame them. And once they're tame, they're really normally slowed down and really comfortable in your presence. And I've done loads of videos on taming and handling, so all links will be in the description below. Number two, they won't eat. This is the most common thing that worries people. So I want to just prepare you for this because if they don't eat, don't have to worry. If you think about it, they're completely stressed out. They're in a new environment, new smells, new sounds. They don't know what's going on. So they're going to be slightly stressed out and they're probably not going to eat. Some geckos will settle in straight away and eat and you won't have a problem. But it's definitely a common thing. So if you've just got a leopard gecko, don't panic. <laughs> Number three, talking to stress, they like smaller tanks. So if you've got a three or four foot tank, that's way too big for a leopard gecko, especially a baby. Babies can stray away from their heat source, which is not good for them, and settling into a massive environment would be very intimidating, and it can take longer for them to settle in, basically. You can usually get a fornarium, which is plastic, that's about 18 inches. I use them for a lot of my geckos. Uh, they're really cheap. I got mine for like £12 here. And you can also use like a two foot vivarium or a small terrarium, as long as it's longer rather than higher. And they'll be totally fine. But if you're getting a baby gecko and you want to put it in a four foot tank, that's way too big. Talking of settling in, make sure they're left in a quiet and safe environment. This will allow them to settle in so much quicker. So if you place their tank in a busy living place where you've got like everyone walking past and talking and a dog and a cat, that's going to stress them out. Now of course over time they will get used to this, but it will take settling in a lot longer. Some people say leave your gecko like a week to settle in. This varies upon gecko and also upon owner. For me, it took me a little bit longer with Gizmo, obviously, because she was my first leopard gecko. But by the time I had Ziggy, I was handling her on the first day I got her. And she tamed really, really quickly. Number five. Keep an eye on where they're sleeping. In the daytime, obviously they're nocturnal, they sleep on the heat mat. If you find your gecko up in the cold area, you have to move it back to the heat mat so it can actually get some heat. Also, make sure the heat mat isn't too hot. Always have a thermostat and a thermometer on it. A thermostat just maintains the temperature a lot better and a thermometer obviously to read the temperature so it's not too hot for your gecko. Number six, shedding. So shedding is a completely normal process with any leopard gecko, but with babies it happens more often. And with their really tiny feet and stuff, they get skin stuck on it so expect to literally have to sit there for as long as it takes just to take these bits of skin off it's extremely important because if these don't come off eventually more layers of skin get on it and more layers and this gets tighter and tighter until it blocks off the blood flow to the toes and they drop off yeah so it's extremely important and you have to be really patient and really careful but it's something that's a major part of having a leopard gecko and babies certainly put you through those tests. Number seven, size of food. This is another common reason your gecko won't be eating is if the food is too big for them. I've done a whole thing on how to know the size of the food for your gecko and taking Ziggy from a small cricket to a slightly bigger cricket and seeing how she reacts with that. They're quite old videos, but I'll put those links in the description as well. Number eight, where they poop. Yeah, leopard geckos tend to keep going to the loo in the same spot once they've chosen a spot. Even sometimes if you move them from one tank to a new tank, they'll just keep going in a certain corner. So once they establish this, this is where you're going to expect to be cleaning out the poop. These last two points are more to do with morph. 
So number nine is red eyes. So if you have a raptor, I believe R means ruby eyes, so you have quite a deep red colour. And you can get some with a brighter red colour. All I know about this is their eyes are extremely sensitive. So with Ziggy when she was little, I would find her in the darkest spot she could possibly find in her tank. And this was just next to the heat map. So she wasn't quite on the heat map, so I realised I had to make some adjustments to her tank to make it as dark as possible because the sunlight just coming in from my window was too bright for her. So if you're having an albino baby and you've got a light in your tank, that would be hell for their eyes. So please consider that. I've already talked about lights before and how I personally would never use the light for my leopard geckos. So be very mindful when getting an albino or a raptor leopard gecko, any leopard gecko with red eyes. And number 10, patterns. They always change. Well, usually they do. So if you get a baby that is like block black stripes and pattern on it, these are usually going to turn into dots. If you go into Google leopard gecko striped adult, you rarely find like block stripes anymore. If you write in leopard gecko striped hatchling you come up with loads of pictures. If you look at Gizmo when she was little she kept changing so after every shed these blocks would slowly turn into dots uh, gradually over time and these dots would go like a purpley black colour. So it's pretty cool to see but if you're expecting to have a gecko that has these stripes throughout its whole entire life that is highly unlikely, though if you buy from a breeder they'll usually show you the parents of the gecko so you know what to expect. So they were my 10 points, I've rambled on a little bit there but I hope they've helped, I'm sure there are so many other things to consider when getting a baby leopard gecko. However, I think I've covered the most part of it. And if you're ever curious about all the other things that go into looking after leopard geckos, check out the rest of my videos. And thank you very much for watching.